scene 1408. Don't forget to like and subscribe. In 1975, in Rome, a remorseful teenager named Angelo Izzo hurriedly left a parked car after committing a terrible act with his two friends. Shortly after, a watchman heard a noise from the vehicle's trunk and found Donatella Colasanti, who had been subjected to brutal torture. Six months prior to this incident, Edoardo Albinati, an introspective boy, was a junior at San Leone Magno, a respected all-boys Catholic school. Among his classmates were Salvatore Izzo, Angelo's brother, the hyperactive pick Mortarolo, whose actress mother was the object of everyone's fantasies, and Giochino Rummo, who upheld the Christian values of the school. During a physical education class, the students engaged in a workout session by the swimming pool, led by Brother Curzio, who didn't look like a typical priest. Later, the headmaster questioned the juniors about an assault on Marco Romoli in the courtyard. Nervously, Marco Devania revealed that some seniors were behind it, naming Gianni Guido and John Pietro, who were subsequently called into the headmaster's office. The headmaster emphasized the need to follow the rules within the school premises, but Gianni's father, Raffaella, interrupted him. Raffaella quickly shifted the conversation to when he could make donations for the upcoming Easter, implying that the situation could be resolved with money. Afterward, Raffaella stood up and quickly took his son Gianni with him. When they arrived home, the angry father scolded his son for tarnishing their reputation and punished him by whipping him with a belt, demanding that he never repeat such behavior. Meanwhile, Giochino lived with his devout family, including his parents, David and Eleanor, and his six siblings. Before starting their meal, he expressed his concerns to his father about how the school failed to address the bullying incident properly, as they only repaired his classmates' eyeglasses. In response, his father pointed out that punishing the bullies might perpetuate a cycle of wrongdoing, and instead, their behavior should be understood and forgiven. Leah interjected, recalling that her father had mentioned forgiveness should come after the sinner's confession. However, her father cautioned her against placing too much trust in perfection. Amidst the discussion, Eleanor set the table, prompting the family to pray together before beginning their meal. As the night progressed, the Romo couple shared intimate moments together. However, Eleanor, who was fertile, hesitated to proceed further, explaining that she didn't want to have another child. Meanwhile, Gianni rode his bike to meet with his friends. He shared how his father punished him, while John revealed that he wasn't scolded. After listening to their friends' stories, Angelo excused himself to get some drinks for them. Before entering the bar, a bystander informed him that their notorious friend, Andrea, would soon be released from jail. That night, upon returning home, Angelo secretly placed a mysterious item inside the bedroom cabinet. Aware that his brother was pretending to sleep, he questioned whether Gianni had informed the headmaster about the bullying incident involving Romoli. When his sibling confessed that he hadn't, Angelo praised and reminded him never to be a snitch. The next day, Eduardo confessed to the priest that he had been pretending to have the same interests and beliefs as others to fit in. He realized that this had only made him feel isolated and decided to stop sacrificing his true self to please others. Behind him, his intelligent friend, Arbus, confessed his disbelief in God to another priest. While walking on the campus, the atheist student revealed to his trusted buddy that he intended to graduate early since he believed he wasn't learning anything anyway. He mistrusted the teachers, whom he thought just assumed things and had no actual knowledge. During math class, the intelligent teen revealed that he was planning to do two school years in one and just get a diploma at another time. But his seatmate reminded him that he should have the required grade of B in all second-year subjects and take all third-year exams, which he was aware of. Seeing his student chatting with Eduardo, the professor called Arbus to solve an equation on the board, allowing him to impress everyone with his mathematical ability. Meanwhile, their charismatic classmate Jervy was also highly regarded, but for his appeal. During Mass, Joaquino's family took their communion, except for their youngest member, Gile, who hadn't reached the right age yet. Afterward, David asked his son why his friends weren't attending Mass, but Joaquino defended that his pals only participated in the compulsory ones at school. While walking home, Eleanor mentioned to her husband that maybe the parents of their son's friends were busy, which was why they couldn't attend the Mass. Suddenly, she paused upon seeing a poster of a clothesless woman holding a Bible behind her back. Intrigued, Eleanor attempted to walk toward the image, failing to realize she was about to get hit by a car. Luckily, her daughter Leah swiftly pulled her to safety. Five months earlier, Raffaella had taken Gianni to the woods to teach him how to hunt with a rifle. Suddenly, a bird squawked on the tree, prompting them to shoot it. When he noticed that his son got distracted, he told him to try again, advising him to be cold-blooded. Meanwhile, as Eduardo visited Arbus's home, he passed by the living room. There, he met his friend's father, Ludovico, 
a logic professor who cared more for his students than his children. Upstairs, he saw an accurate imitation of their house, which his intelligent pal revealed his dad built for his sister. While studying chemistry, Arbus's mother, Ilaria, entered the room to give the boys some snacks before inviting them to play poker. Meanwhile, Pick was practicing his sword skills when his beautiful mother, Carola, advised him to put the sharp weapon down for his safety. When he declared that he was starving, the ill actress instructed her son to ask their maid to serve him. As he yelled for their helper, the peculiar boy playfully placed the weapon on his mom's throat, prompting her to call out his clownish behavior. The following day, the students were on their way to a retreat. As the juniors cheered in chorus, the annoyed Curzio reprimanded them for their loud voices. Shortly after, the boys settled in their dorms, Professor Golgata invited them to a room with a displayed painting. When the instructor asked the boys to describe it, Salvatore answered that the artwork showed six men beating Jesus. When the instructor asked who was the real victim, the student immediately responded, Jesus. However, the professor argued that the perpetrators were victims too, asserting that those who hurt also hurt themselves. Meanwhile, the atheistic Arbus argued that Jesus is an aggressor too, as he utilized his enemy's evilness to be above them and be perfect. To counter the non-believer, Giochino stated that good is perfection, which means that perfection is God. Processing the student's answers, Golgata claimed that the devil perhaps manifested itself when people were on the good side or too fixated on perfection. Upon hearing this, the pious junior inquired if good behavior meant following evil's suggestions, questioning if there wasn't any difference between the saint and his tormentors. The professor explained that Jesus was human, meaning he was imperfect. He further discussed that becoming a man means inheriting, perpetrating, and being a prey of evil. But to be a target of evil, someone else must commit it. Hearing his professor's response, Giochino remained unconvinced, as he believed that becoming a man meant doing good deeds, not purely perpetrating evil. That night, the juniors invited Devania to reenact the painting, casting him as Jesus. After Jervy asked him to undress, they let him kneel. Initially, they whipped him lightly but struck him harder as they progressed, calling him out for being a snitch. Realizing this, Salvatore and Edoardo withdrew from participating and tried to stop their classmates. To help the poor student escape the beating, Edoardo convinced him to renounce his faith, just as the bullies instructed him. However, the victimized junior refused to do it until Giochino intervened. After calling out the aggressors, the religious boy carried his injured classmate back to the dorm. Following the incident, Edoardo thought being a male was a disease involving doing all kinds of things to get his peers' approval. He emphasized the toxicity of pretending to be strong to be seen as a real man. Unfortunately, due to his intervention, he got an invitation to the demon's chair the following early morning. He accepted it so he won't lose masculinity points. The following day, when he got to the venue, he saw cloaked people surrounding a burning chair, one of them was a girl. Meanwhile, upon learning that Salvatore withdrew from beating Devania, Angelo ordered his brother to assert his masculinity by declaring that he didn't like men. 130 hours before the incident, John met Donatella and Nadia, who requested to be taken to Montagnola because they missed their tram. Along the way, the senior lied about his name, calling himself Carlo. He then bonded with the aspiring models, before dropping them off and getting their numbers. Afterward, he picked up his friends Angelo and Gianni, who were interested in meeting the girls. Meanwhile, Pick needed help with the upcoming tests, prompting him to arrange a tutorial session with Edoardo at their house that afternoon. While studying, the hyperactive student noticed his tutor looking at a photo of his mom, so he explained that she used to be an actress. He then called his mother upstairs to introduce her to his friend. Shortly after, he rudely asked his mom for a snack, which made his classmate uncomfortable with his behavior toward her. That night, Pick took his sword and entered his mom's room. As Carola was sleeping, she was unaware that her son threatened to stab her. Three months before the incident, Arbus explained to Eduardo how cockroaches' lives were difficult to end because they have a sturdy and flexible exoskeleton. He revealed that the way to end a cockroach is by targeting its chest, just like with people. Afterward, the introspective boy watched his classmate and her sister, Lita, play the piano together. As he stared at her, he realized she was the cloaked girl during the demon's chair ritual. Because of this, it became clear to him that madness runs in his friend's family. As he contemplated the Arbus family's attachment to evil things on his way home, he recalled what Professor Golgata said about it being necessary to go through evil to become a man. Suddenly, he ran into Monica, whom he had met last summer at the Seaside National Reserve. She gave him her number before, but he lost it and couldn't call her. To ensure he won't misplace it again, she wrote her contact details on his paper before they separated ways. That evening, Corolla accompanied Pick as the driver dropped him off at Giochino's birthday party, 
where her son introduced him to Jervy, his attractive classmate. Later, as everyone raised their glasses for the celebrant, the promiscuous junior and Leah met in the back. Shortly after having a private moment together, he left her coldly and returned to the party. Meanwhile, Salvatore accompanied his brother to a nearby bar, where he met his friends. When John announced Andrea's release from prison, the seniors shared a toast celebrating their delinquent friend's freedom. Shortly after, the shy junior spotted someone he knew named Sarah, who was walking home. After Giochino's party, Eduardo and Arbus rode a motorcycle going home. Along the way, they surprisingly found Curzio picking up a woman in the street, which wasn't very Christian-like. Two months before the incident, Professor Cosmo told Arbus that his essay was well-written but lacked personal interpretation. The instructor expressed that his work deserved a grade of C, despite knowing that he needed a B to graduate early. Subsequently, he read Benes's work out loud, in which the student expressed his view of a notorious German dictator as the greatest man in history. Afterward, the teacher crumpled the paper and hurled it onto the boy's head. When Angelo noticed that Sarah didn't acknowledge his brother's greeting, they followed her into an alley. The intimidating teen then confronted her and demanded that she hang out with Salvatore. After the ruthless teen grabbed her face aggressively, she pleaded with him to let her go, explaining that she needed to go home. Witnessing this incident, the sensitive boy was left speechless, appalled by his older brother's disrespectful treatment of women. Suddenly, Jervy confronted his professor, questioning why he lectured about democracy yet refused to accept an essay on a chosen historical figure. In response, Cosmo highlighted that the dictator wasn't associated with democracy. Meanwhile, Devania discreetly moved his hands to Salvatore's thigh, prompting him to remove it. Then, as the shy boy glanced behind him, he realized that Eduardo had witnessed it. Outside the school, Leo awaited an opportunity to speak with Jervy, believing they shared a special connection. However, to her surprise, another girl hurriedly kissed him and hopped onto his motorcycle. As he drove off, he promised to see her some other time. Meanwhile, while Eduardo spent the day at Arbus's place, his genius friend caught his father kissing his student, whom Ilaria subsequently spotted leaving through their gate. Seventy hours before the incident, John introduced his friends to Donatella and her neighbor, Rosaria, at a fancy restaurant. Upon learning that Nadia couldn't join them, he made an excuse to make a phone call. After Angelo followed him, John admitted that he wasn't interested in spending time with the girls, leading his friend to ask him to act as their wingman. Eventually, they planned to visit the cinema on an upcoming weekday and successfully convinced John to join them because Nadia might also tag along. Meanwhile, upon returning home, Arbus discovered that his father had left them. Lita handed him a newspaper that contained Ludovico's public confession about his attraction to men. This revelation overwhelmed the intelligent student, prompting him to snip the heads off the dolls in the house installation his dad built for his sister. Meanwhile, outside Jervy's place, Leah anxiously waited for him, confessing that she had followed him, which is how she knew his address. After apologizing for rushing the other day, the promiscuous junior invited the girl inside his empty house, seeking to spend an intimate moment together. The next day, as the Romo family embarked on a trek in the woods, Eleanor accidentally tripped and injured her foot, requiring her children's assistance. During this time, Leah realized that Gile had not followed them, raising concern about her siblings' whereabouts. As Leah searched for her sister, she tragically discovered that Gile had consumed the poisonous berries they found in the woods. Despite the family's desperate attempts to make her spit out the fruit, their efforts were in vain, and the youngest Romo succumbed to the poisoning, passing away. The tragic loss of their family member brought significant changes within the pious Romo family. Years later, Eduardo became a psychiatrist and reunited with Giochino, treating some of their former classmates. However, the outcomes were devastating. Benazza ended up taking his own life, Shioti displayed sadism, Devania exhibited masochism, and Jervi tragically perished while preparing for a terroristic attack. After successfully completing their exams, Eduardo encountered Curzio, who congratulated him for passing with excellence. However, when the junior looked forward to seeing him the following year, the priest hinted that he would no longer be at the school. Meanwhile, in the Izzo household, Anna worried for her son Salvatore, who seemed preoccupied after his successful exams. When Angelo assumed that his brother must be in love, Salvatore immediately denied it, leaving his emotions a mystery. Shortly after his older sibling headed off for a party, the curious boy opened the cabinet and shockingly discovered that his brother had been keeping photos of scantily clad women. 36 hours before the incident, Angelo and Gianni met Donatella and Rosaria at the cinema. Unfortunately, Nadia and Carlo couldn't join them for personal reasons. To entice the girls to visit Andrea's remote villa, Angelo fabricated a story that Carlo had invited them there. Though initially hesitant, 
the girls eventually decided to skip the film and join the boys in the car, heading towards the beautiful house with a lovely sea view. Meanwhile, Eduardo planned to congratulate Arbus for completing two school years in one. However, when he arrived at his friend's house, he was surprised to find only Lita at home, prompting them to engage in intimate activities. However, their moment was interrupted when he felt awkward, despite having dreamed of being alone with her. Eventually, after receiving an invite to the Circuo party in a public park, he saw Lita being slapped by a random guy. When he tried to offer help, she only advised him not to get involved, labeling him as a child. Eduardo later approached Pick, seeking his assistance in inviting Monica to the party. They decided to call her from a phone booth, and she agreed to be picked up in an hour. Excitedly, Eduardo went home to get his car, but there, he made an unexpected discovery, Jervy was involved in a romantic relationship with Eduardo's mother. Afterward, Pick and Eduardo picked up Monica and her tomboyish friend Erica. They set out for Circuo, and along the way, the curly-haired girl suggested making a stop at their place for a drink. Everyone agreed, and they all spent some private moments separately. However, Pick suddenly felt overwhelmed and expressed his desire to return home. In the villa, as the evening approached, Rosaria became aware of the time and asked Donatella about Carlo's expected arrival. Soon after, Gianni brandished his gun, commanding the girls to remain still. Angelo then led them into the bathroom, where they were left without food or water. To avoid suspicion, Gianni returned home and concocted a story about a flat tire. He also phoned Angelo's mother, explaining that her son wouldn't be back as he had flea market plans with John the next day. That very night, Salvatore apologized to Sarah for his elder brother's previous behavior. Meanwhile, Angelo, who was alone in the villa, exploited Rosaria and then Donatella, despite her pleas for freedom in exchange for silence. The next day, the traumatized girls attempted to catch the attention of a stranger they heard outside the house. However, their perpetrator swiftly intervened and brought them to the living room where they encountered Andrea Kira. After Donatella begged to return home, the mastermind assured them that they would be released if they agreed to keep quiet, to which she reluctantly consented. In the following days, the three boys tormented the girls and subjected them to aggressive acts, causing them to lose consciousness. Desperate for help, injured Donatella dared to use the phone while the boys were occupied upstairs taking advantage of her friend. Her actions were quickly discovered, leading to a severe beating that left her unconscious. Upon regaining consciousness, she pretended to be lifeless when overhearing the boys discussing their plans to eliminate them. Once the gruesome act was done, the lifeless bodies were wrapped in a blanket and concealed in the trunk of the car. Andrea then assigned the task of disposing of the corpses to the two boys. As they parked the car near his house, Gianni made it clear that he would leave the vehicle with Angelo temporarily and return later to complete the disposal. Handing over the car keys, he left Angelo alone with the grim task. However, overwhelmed by paranoia and fear, Angelo hesitated and began to distance himself from the car. Upon realizing that the car had come to a stop and that her friend had tragically passed away, Donatella desperately sought help by banging on the trunk. Her actions caught the attention of a passing police officer, leading to the discovery of her and the arrest of her captors. The horrifying event sent shockwaves through the neighborhood, leaving residents uncertain and fearful. However, as time passed, life slowly returned to its usual rhythm. Meanwhile, Eduardo decided to leave during his final year of high school, embarking on a new path. The tragic fate of Rosaria and the torment endured by Donatella sparked a heated debate that finally reached its resolution in 1996 when their ordeal was officially recognized as a heinous violation against the person. As a consequence, the three perpetrators received life sentences for their actions. Angelo, granted parole in 2005 due to good behavior, tragically took the lives of two more women after his release. Andrea, however, managed to evade capture and eventually passed away in Morocco in 1994. Gianni, following a reduction in his sentence, regained his freedom in 2009. The case brought significant attention to the need for better protection and justice for victims of such crimes and highlighted the evolution of societal attitudes towards sexual violence.